Keon Coleman gave his commitment to the Florida State Seminoles. And I mean, the good folks in Tallahassee, I said it already. There's no more Seminole colored Kool-Aid that you can get anymore. There, there, there's there's all the, the garnet and gold Kool-Aid is gone. You can't buy anymore, not online, not in stores, because it is currently being chugged, okay? And Keon Coleman, I think, caused the last couple of units of that to no longer be in stock because for Florida State, we'll talk more about this here in just a few seconds, but the expectation is the expectation. The ACC is wide open. This is the year to make a run at the college football playoff. Got a ton of dogs back, and Keon Coleman now just turns that talent knob up a little bit more on that roster so what does it mean though for for Keon Coleman to go to Florida State what is the the impact here the headline is going to read Florida State gets another big body pass catcher which is true and we got to talk about because they got Keon Coleman at 6'4 215 man-to-man problem Kyle Morlock a transfer tight end who's 6'7 Johnny Wilson a receiver who's 6'7 235 Jaheim Bell, who's 6'3". Like, you go down the roster here, there's no personnel anywhere in the country that has recruited to cover 6'7 guys when multiple multiple of them are on the field. Or, or a 6'4 receiver to go along with a 6'7 receiver. Like, it's just, it's just skyscrapers all across the field here for Florida State. So that's the first part of this. You dig a little bit deeper, and I think the real impact lies in ensuring that Florida State can stay balanced. We said the same thing on our one-off video yesterday. In Florida State, they want to be a run-first football team. Ran the ball 54% of the time last year. Alex Atkins, I say this a lot with coordinators, you can't change where you're from. And I'm not talking about geographically, I'm talking about where you're from in the football world. And Alex Atkins, offensive lineman, he's coached the O-line. He has a good feel as to what they want to do on the line of scrimmage. They're going to try and push you around. They're going to want to move you against their will. So they're going to run the football. Trey Benson averaged six yards a carry last year. They're going to pound the rock. But then off of that, they're going to be able to throw the football too. And this is just ensuring that that's going to be something you can do. Now you walk into a fight if you're Florida State, and you can throw whatever kind of punch you want. We want to run the ball against you. We can do that. We want to go aerial assault against you. We can do that because we got a bunch of just towers on the outside. So that's that piece. You peel back another layer. And we've been saying this here really since the season ended and what we expect Florida State going forward, I really think that for Florida State to accomplish what they want to accomplish, college football playoff berth, ACC title, all that, to get that done, I think they need to have a 5 to 10% uptick for what they're doing offensively from a points-per-game standpoint. Because they averaged 35 points a game last year. So everybody that's yelling at your at your television or you just pause the podcast to absolutely let out a scream, I hear you, we're good, let's talk about this a little bit more. 35 points a game, really good. But look at the teams that made the college football playoff last year. TCU, averaged 39 points a game, essentially 40. Georgia, averaged 42 points a game. Ohio State, averaged 44 points a game. Michigan, averaged 40 points a game. All of these teams that made the college football playoff are living in that 40 points a game range. I think you need that for Florida State. Last year, when Florida State had their three losses, in all three of those games, they failed to score over 30 points. So what does that tell you? Florida State, they need to be able to get into those shootouts and get into those games where, hey, if it's a day where we got to score 45 to win, it's a 45-43 kind of game, we need to be able to live that way. That's what I'm looking for for Florida State. And that's the real impact here with Keon Coleman. Because now you add another weapon. Another guy for Jordan Travis to spin the rock to. That opens the door in my mind to get to that 40 points a game range. I'm not saying Keon Coleman makes all the difference, but I don't think he hurts your efforts. Jordan Travis and his maturation, Jaheim Bell over the middle. I've mentioned all these weapons and the balance of the offense, but Keon Coleman is another weapon to help get you that just 5 to 10% uptick in points per game that I think it's going to take for Florida State to get to the college football playoff. So that's the football side of things. The other side of this, and this might go under the radar, I've said this multiple times, I think this Keon Coleman recruitment had a very real NIL component to it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I don't think I am on this. That's what I have heard, and that's what the way it looks. And so this is actually a good thing for Florida State because look at all the things that have been said around the state of Florida. Miami and what they were doing grabbing top talent. 
and having a, a strong NIL presence. Florida and their NIL presence. Those were the two schools in the state of Florida that were getting all the NIL headlines and all the shine and all the buzz around what they were doing. And Florida State's just sitting back there saying, well, yeah, but we had the best season of those three. Well, yeah, but we have the most training production and just kind of hanging in the shadows. And so I think for Florida State to land someone like Keon Coleman, I think this is an NIL flex. I really do. I think it just says, hey, our money is just fine in Tallahassee. Our money is just as good as y'all's. And we're going to use it to grab guys like Keon Coleman, to help us grab guys like Keon Coleman. I think it's a good sign for Florida State fans. I really do. Because it shows that you have people that care about your football team, care about what Mike Norvell's doing, and they have it aligned in a way to where they get that to the right places. Because you hear a lot of stories now about NIL being disorganized and having people not on the same page. Doesn't sound like that's the case. Based on this recruitment, based on Keon Coleman landing up in Tallahassee, I think this is great for Florida State. And I think it sends a very strong, clear message to the rest of the college football landscape. Florida State, we can play that game too if you need us to. We can get that done for you. So now, that's where Keon Coleman is headed. That's the way that it helps Florida State. This is what it says about the NIL presence at Florida State. But 2023 has got as much pressure around it as any season in recent memory for Florida State. And I'll say this, if you're a Florida State fan, you say, hallelujah, we welcome that with open arms. You welcome expectations. I mean, because what's the opposite of that? Not having expectations, expecting nothing from your football team, saying, oh, I hope we have a good year. No, you have all the reason in the world to be hopeful. And Keon Coleman turns the knob up on expectations as well. I mean, I was scrolling through Twitter yesterday and Twitter is toxic, but we love it. There was so much talk around week one and around Florida State being a national title contender. Like this just heaped more fuel onto the fire. That is the excitement around Florida State in 2023. Pressure is privilege. Pressure is privilege. And Florida State right now has a lot of pressure. And for good reason. Like I just said, Keon Coleman now joining the party. Jordan Travis back for another year. Jaheim Bell through the portal. Fentrell Cypress for the portal. At the time of us being live right now, they got a top 10 portal class. 94% of that defense production is back. That allowed 22 points a game last year. Like, it's all there. It is all there. And the ACC feels wide open. So for Florida State, Keon Coleman's a huge get. But in the grand scheme of things, the pressure just continues to mount. And that is a good thing for Florida State. Expectations are always a good thing. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.